All right, guys, today in this video, I'm going to do a comparison of three different VR headsets or virtual reality headsets I've owned before. Um, I just want to give you guys my impressions of each because all three are actually still available on the market. So um, I think that this would be quite useful for people who are looking for a, a VR headset to get into the, the you know, the VR kind of um, industry these days, right? There's a lot of games coming out for VR. The PSVR 2 just re released, although that's for PlayStation. Uh, these ones are going to be all uh, compatible with PC. Um, so yeah, people want to get into VR, I hope can benefit from this video. So yeah, um, the three different VR headsets um, I want to talk about today are the Valve Index, the HP Reverb G2, and the Oculus Quest 2, also known as the MetaQuest 2 now. Uh, so I've owned all three of these before and give you guys my impressions because they all have their pros and cons, their own strengths and weaknesses, all right? Okay, so let's start off with the Valve Index. Um, the Valve Index, um, the thing I like about the Valve Index is that it's a uh, it's obviously a very powerful VR headset, especially for the time that it came out. It came back, uh, it came out in uh, 2019, which is, <laughs> what makes it like four years old now, but it's still very capable. Uh, so the specs on it are quite good, especially for the time. Um, so if you, if you look at the specs here, it has a resolution of 1440 by 1600 per eye. So it's uh, not the highest resolution headset anymore, but certainly at the time it was, it was quite high end. 144 hertz refresh rate is quite high even by today's standards. So the refresh rate on the um, the Valve Index is definitely one of the the biggest strengths of it because it still holds up today. Um, it also has uh, quite a wide field of view. It has 108 degrees horizontal field of view, 104 degrees vertical field of view. Uh, so yeah, the uh, so it also has a quite a wide field of view. So it has 108 degrees horizontal field of view and 104 degrees vertical field of view. So um, I would say the strengths, the main strengths of uh, the Valve Index are really, um, in terms of the headset itself, um, resolution is not the best today, but I would say the refresh rate is still quite up there, 144 hertz, and the field of view is actually quite wide, even uh, compared to today's top VR headsets. The other major thing about the Valve Index, the major strength, I would say, is the controllers. So the Valve Index uses these controllers, they call the Knuckles controllers, and they are quite advanced, especially for the time, but even today. Uh, the Knuckles controllers are very capable controllers. Um, I think what makes them unique, at least when I was using the Valve Index compared to the other headsets uh, and other controllers, was that it actually individually detects your uh, fingers where you're gripping the controller or not. So it can, it's not just the thumb and the rest of your hand as in the other controllers that I've used, right? So in other controllers I've used, usually they only detect whether you like open or close your, your hand and um, your thumb, right? They can detect that, uh, but the individual finger tracking is not that great. For the Valve Index, the Knuckles controller is very interesting. It's a lot of people say it's one of the best controllers for VR because it tracks your individual finger. So it's not just your like your thumb and then the rest of your hand. It's actually um, each individual finger. So I thought that was really cool and interesting. So those are the strengths of the Valve Index. Um, the weaknesses of the Valve Index, um, I would say, actually, this is both a strength and a weakness, but having the Steam VR base stations, you need to have those in order to get the full like body tracking. And that's both a strength of the Valve Index because it can do full body tracking and full room scale VR. Um, but the downside is that it also makes it more expensive. So unless you have a HTC Vive already, which you required you have um, the Steam VR base stations, you need to buy the Steam VR like uh, base station bundle, which is really expensive. So if you just get the headset and the controller, um, if you already have a set of Steam VR base stations, then it's 750 bucks US, which is quite a lot of money still. It's not that uh, cheap um, even even without the base stations. Uh, but you need to get the base stations right to get the full um, VR experience. So then you need to pay up the $1,000 US for the full bundle, the full package. Um, of course, you need to have the Steam VR base stations that's made by Valve, right? So of course, the Steam VR. Um, yeah, so I would say the, the, main, uh, the main con of the Valve Index really is the price. So it's, it's quite expensive. Uh, I think for the time that it came out, uh, this was four years ago, 2019, it was probably the most expensive. Um, VR headset. Now there's more expensive ones, right? But but back then it was probably the most uh, expensive and highest end headset you can get. Um, also compared to these days, 1440 by 1600 per eye is not um, is actually not <laughs> very competitive. Nowadays you can find a much much higher resolution, like 4K basically uh, resolution uh, for VR headsets these days. So that's another con now because it's 
it's kind of aged uh, in the terms of its, its resolution specs. So it's not the highest resolution VR headset anymore. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are the two cons. Um, it's expensive and it's uh, it's not the highest resolution. It's not low resolution for sure. It's it's still like very high resolution, just it's not competitive these days. Okay, so that's the Valve Index pros and cons. And next I want to talk about the HP Reverb G2. Um, so this, ha this one, I, I think the major uh, pro of this, the major strength of the HP Reverb G2 is the, the specs that you get. So the resolution especially is 2160 by 2160 per eye, which is very competitive even by today's standards. I mean, this came out in 2020, so it's, it's about three years old. But even by today's standards with the, you know, all the expensive VR headsets coming out today, um, 2160 by 2160 per eye is very competitive. So it's got a very high resolution. Um, so that's the main strength of the HP Reverb G2, I would say. Uh, and the refresh rate is only 90 hertz, so it's not, you know, uh, the Valve Index is still uh, better when it comes to refresh rate. Uh, the field of view, 98 degrees, horizontal, 90 degrees vertical is also not that great. Um, so I would say the main strength of the HP Reverb G2 is that resolution. It's that 2160 by 2160 per eye. I can tell when I'm using the HP Reverb G2. Wow, like no um, screen door effect at all, of course. And everything is, is uh, very, very, like, very clear. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's that's real strength. It's not too expensive. Like, six hundred dollars includes the controllers. It's not bad um, for that price, right? So, especially for that amount of resolution that you get. When the HP Reverb G2 came out, a lot of people were like, "Wow, this is like much higher resolution than the Valve Index, and it's cheaper, right? Six hundred dollars. Uh, you don't need any Steam VR um, type of tracking because it it has the inside out tracking features. It has the um, you know the same kind of tracking that the the Meta Quest uses, which means you don't need to have any kind of base stations or anything sensors outside to uh, ex any external sensors outside to track you. It just um, just put on the headset and it can track you, right? So it's easy to use in that sense, uh, and it's six hundred bucks is very reasonable for for that kind of specs, right? Twenty one sixty by twenty one sixty resolution, uh, so very high resolution. And the price is reasonable, I think. Those are the strengths of the HP Reverb G2. The downsides of the Reverb G2, why I didn't uh, keep it, um, <clears throat> I think the main problem is the controllers. Uh, so the it uses Windows Mixed Reality. Of course, it's compatible with SteamVR as well, but um, it uses Windows Mixed Reality controllers, which are not that great. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, all the other controllers I've used, like the, the Quest controllers, um, Oculus Touch, you know, uh, obviously the Valve Index Knuckles controllers, like they're all better than the Windows Mixed Reality controllers. I just found the Mixed Reality controllers very meh. Like, it works, but it's not it's not fun to use, not comfortable, as comfortable as the other controllers, not as intuitive as the other controllers I've used. Um, yeah, it just it's not great feeling. Uh, and like it works, but it's not like, yeah, it it doesn't uh, feel great to use, and um, of course it doesn't have some of the features that the Valve Index Knuckles controllers have, like individual finger tracking and everything. So in terms of the tech, in terms of the comfort and ease of use, I don't like the controllers that much. That was the main reason that I didn't keep the uh, Reverb G2. So the headset itself is great. It's got high resolution. I mean, the refresh rate could be better, and the field of view could be better, but. In terms of the resolution, it's great, and for what you get for the price, but just the controllers really let it down, and I really didn't have, um, yeah, I didn't like using the controllers. It wasn't um, great for me to use, so that's that's the main reason why I didn't keep the Reverb G2. Okay, so now we come to the Oculus Quest 2 or the Meta Quest 2. Okay, so why is this my current VR headset, and why did I choose it over the other two? Um, so first of all, I would say the pros of the Meta Quest 2. Uh, the main pro is uh, the price. So at 400 bucks, it is the cheapest out of these three. And yeah, it's it's just more affordable. It's more widely available to people. It's more affordable. Another thing is it's wireless. So uh, it has a, a self-contained um, kind of operating system and interface you can use. Uh, like it has an Oculus Store, right? Or Meta Store now. Uh, that you can just play games and stuff on it without connecting it to your computer. And by the way, these all three of these headsets are for PC. They're not for uh, like PSVR two came out. That's great, uh, but these are all for for PC, right? Um, yeah. So you don't need a wire to connect it to your PC. That kind of frees up a lot of. Um, it just frees you up to be able to move more. Uh, 
Whereas the other two are, are basically, yeah, very high-powered PC VR headsets. Yeah, this one is, um, I think the, the Quest 2, it both has that self-contained, uh, you know, operating system and store, which is great, right? You can use it without your computer anywhere. That's really convenient. But you can also connect it to your computer too, to kind of get that uh, full, you know, PC VR experience. So it's nice that it offers that option. You can either connect it to your computer tethered, or you can use it wirelessly. And um, I think that's that's a really nice um, ability to have this very flexible, right? That's that's something that the other two headsets doesn't have. And it does this while being cheaper as well. Uh, so that's impressive. When it comes to the specs, uh, 1832 by 1920 resolution per eye is pretty good for the price, actually. Like, uh, it's not as high resolution as the HP Reverb G2, but it's actually higher resolution than um, the Valve Index. So the Valve Index, remember, is 1440 by 1600 per eye, and the Oculus or MetaQuest 2 is 1832 by 1920 resolution per eye, and it's actually higher resolution than the Valve Index, which is a, like, that headset's way more expensive. So, yeah, at 400 bucks, the resolution for the Quest 2 is very good for the price. Uh, so yeah, not as high as the v Reverb G2, but that, you know, that has a super high resolution for the price. Um, but it's cheaper than the Reverb G2 too, by 200 bucks. So yeah, for the price, it's very, very good. And 90 hertz refresh rate, fine. Not mind-blowing or anything. That's the same as the Reverb G2. Um, field of view, again, not mind-blowing anything. That's similar to the G2. So the, the Valve Index still wins out in terms of the refresh rate and field of view, but yeah, when it comes to the actual, what you get for the price point, um, the Quest 2 is, is pretty good. Uh, and I have to mention, the controllers are not bad either. Like, it's based on the original Oculus Touch controllers, which I owned way back in 2016, uh, when they first came out. Um, but it's only, they've only improved it since then. Uh, so it's a, it's a great set of controllers. I, I have been very familiar with the Oculus Touch controllers since I've used it since they came out. I used it with the original Rift, the Rift S, and, um, and now with the Quest 2. I'm just very familiar with the uh, Oculus controllers or the Meta controllers. So yeah, it's just very comfortable controllers for me to use. Now, in terms of capability, it's still not up there with the Valve Index Knuckles controllers, but uh, it's fine. It's good enough for me uh, for what I use it for. And it's it's a way better feeling experience than using those Windows Mixed Reality controllers on the uh, Reverb G2 headset. So um, yeah, for me, the uh, the Meta Quest 2 is a, is a really nice um, option for me because it's both cheaper than the Reverb G2 and the Valve Index, and it's still very capable, right? You still get a very decent resolution. Um, for me, it's you know it's still high resolution enough for me. Not you know G2 is going to be like really really you know crystal clear and everything, but it's fine. I, I think the resolution of the Quest 2 is enough for me uh, for my daily use since I'm only using it for mostly like social VR games and apps and things like that. Uh, and the controllers are good enough for me too. Um, not the best controllers, but you know, not the worst either. It's it's totally fine. Yeah. So at that end of the price, right? It's just it's it's very affordable. So uh, that's all the pros of the Quest Two. So what's the cons? So I haven't talked about this yet, um, but I will talk about it now. Uh, it's the different levels of comfort for all these headsets because that's one major thing is the, the comfort, right? So in terms of the weight, um, I believe the the Index 2, uh, sorry, the Index, the Valve Index is the one that weighs, weighs the most. So in terms of the weight of each headset, I believe the Index is the one that weighs the most. It weighs um, 800 grams. Uh, I believe, so that's the heaviest out of all three. And then the Reverb G2 and the MetaQuest 2 both weigh around 500 grams. So in terms of the actual weight on your head, uh, the, the G2 and the Quest are going to be more comfortable than the Index. Um, but when it comes to actual, like, I'm not just talking about the weight, but talking about how well it fits over your head and the level of comfort with the straps and everything. Uh, and for that, I don't like the Quest 2. Like, the thing is, I've always had a problem with the Quest 2's like little strap at the back. It just doesn't provide enough um, of a counterweight against your head because when you're like moving your head, like you know, from side to side, or you're like looking up and down uh, in an actual VR game, of course, uh, you're gonna need some counterweight on the back of your head to kind of like keep your headset balanced, right? The I think the the Meta Quest 2 just doesn't it just doesn't offer enough of that. Like there's there's nothing really as a counterweight on the back of the head. It's just a strap. So I find whenever I look down or something, the 
the headset just kind of tilts over and it's it's kind of like trying to fall off my head right so I have to constantly adjust it and try to like keep it uh, strapped to my head uh, so that's kind of annoying like like if I like if I look down too far down um, it's it tries to slip off my head because there is enough counterweight on the back of the headset so even, even though it's like yeah the actual weight of the headset itself is not that much it's it's not going to be a huge burden to wear it for a long time but it's just the actual experience of wearing it I think it could be better uh, whereas G2 and the index both have a more substantial uh, strap at the back to actually like act as more of like a yeah like a counterweight right so if you look at the G2 and index yeah the the strap at the back is more substantial uh, whereas with the the MetaQuest 2 it's a very thin light strap so it doesn't offer enough counterweight so whenever I look down yeah it's very it, it, it tends to like kind of slip off in my head because it gets like top heavy or front heavy so I think that is my main issue with the Quest 2 um, so yeah it's nothing related to the actual specs and stuff uh, or the price that's really pretty good for the Quest 2 it's more related to the actual uh, experience of using it um, now it hasn't totally like dissuaded me from actually uh, getting rid of it so far I still use it as my main VR headset but that's probably my biggest con with it that's that's the thing I don't like the most um, I think for the next revision uh, yeah meta or Facebook should think about um, putting more weight at the back because yeah that's just having like a little thin strap at the back isn't enough to keep the headset balanced uh, whereas yeah the other I haven't used the HTC Vive, by the way. Um, that's another headset maybe like some people are thinking about. I haven't used it, so I can't put it in this comparison. But um, maybe HTC Vive as well. They have, I know they have some sort of like strap or thing at the back that's pretty substantial. And the Reverb G2 and the Index both have that. A more substantial um, head strap at the back. So it's, it has more weight and it's bigger, more comfortable. Uh, yeah, it's, that's the other thing. It's like the, the Quest 2 head strap isn't that comfortable at the like the strap itself isn't that comfortable. Whereas the G2, the Index, and the Vive probably, they offer a lot more comfort at the back, a lot more cushioning. So yeah, I think that's my main issue with the, the Quest 2. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the sound quality of these VR headsets. So out of the three, um, I think the Valve Index and the HP Reverb G2, they have very similar speakers that like kind of just hang off the ear like that, um, off the headset. And I think they're both pretty decent. Um, in my experience, I think they're both pretty decent sounding. Um, they'll get you like yeah decent quality sound and a uh, good amount of ambience right because when you're moving around in VR you need to be able to hear the ambience and the surrounds of surround effects and um, yeah I think they're both pretty decent for what they are uh, and I would say they're probably better than the ones on the Oculus uh, Quest 2 although the ones on the Oculus Quest 2 are kind of interesting because they're actually yeah, the speakers itself, I think, are smaller than the ones on the Index and the uh, Reverb G2. Um, but they're a little bit like, um, they're built in a little bit closer inside the headset itself. It's kind of like emanating from inside the headset. So it's it's a little bit of a different design. Um, but it's also pretty oh, decent, actually, when I, when I hear it. Um, but I believe the Index and the G2, um, I think my impressions were probably a little bit better uh, because they're, they have these uh, bigger speakers just hanging off the ear as compared to the smaller ones that are actually inside the headset for the Oculus Quest 2. Not to say the Oculus Quest 2 um, are bad, uh, just they do it differently and um, because the speakers are smaller, of course they don't provide as much as uh, with the, the Reverb G2 and the uh, Valve Index. But one thing you have to know is that both the Oculus Quest 2 and the Valve Index have 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, which means you can plug external headphones or earphones or IEMs into them. And that's something that the Reverb G2 doesn't have. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. If you're not planning to uh, plug in your own headphones and stuff, then the G2 is the Reverb G2 is fine. Um, but if you're planning on using your own headphones, like over your headphones, I would recommend or IEMs. Then, um, then yeah, the Quest 2 and the Valve Index are probably better since they have a 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, so yeah, it really depends on how you're going to be using your headset for sound. Um, so yeah, that's really, that's really it. Probably the most versatile out of the the three is the Valve Index. Um, it is the most expensive out of the three, but it does have uh, pretty good built-in speakers and also the expansion to plug in your own stuff. Um, if you just want some pretty good built-in ones, but you don't care about putting your own headphones on and stuff, then the, then the V-Rib G2 is fine. Uh, and yeah, if you're just planning on uh, having, like I said, the Quest 2 probably has the best value, right? Uh, it has 
it has okay built-in speakers, not not as good as the Reverb G2 or the Index, but it's okay. Uh, and you can also expand it, right? Putting your own IEMs or uh, or headphones. So, yeah, um, that's what I would say about the sound quality. Yeah. Uh, overall, if you just want the built-in stuff, then Index or G2. Um, or if you're uh, looking to expand it, then probably the Index or the Quest 2. So that's it, guys. Um, that's my comparison of the three I've uh, used so far. Um, I, well, I've used the uh, the Rift S and the previous Rift as well, but the three that's still on the market. Uh, yeah, the Index, if you really want the Index, I think the room scale VR is very nice. That's one of the positives as well. Uh, and the refresh rate in the field of view. Uh, those are the, the positives of, of the Index. Um, but yeah, the price <laughs> is the issue with that. The G2, if you just want like a really nice high resolution, the highest resolution has that you can get for the price, $600. Uh, it's a very solid option, um, but I don't like the controllers that you get with it. <laughs> uh, and then the, the MetaQuest 2, which is the one I'm still using now. Uh, the price is very good, the specs are very good. Just um, it, it could be a little bit uncomfortable sometimes when I'm playing game, VR games with a certain, like certain times when I'm looking down or whatever, it's, it's not as comfortable. I didn't think that's my main issue with it. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, which one of these VR headsets you prefer? Um, and yeah, like maybe in the future I'll I'll try out HTC Vive, uh, but right now, um, so yeah, maybe in the future I'll get an HTC Vive headset. Um, but from what I've seen before, the Pro Two, the Cosmos Elite, that stuff, they still use that Steam VR tracking base stations. I don't like to use those actually. Um, I used I tried it with the Valve Index, of course, but. Uh, uh, it's just extra stuff for me to set up, and that's one of the negatives actually I didn't like about the the uh, the Valve Index is you have to buy these extra base stations and sensors and kind of set it up like that. It's it's just extra work. I don't like that. I like having just an all-in-one headset. Um, so yeah, I'm taking a look at the Vive XR Elite. So maybe when it comes down in price more, I'll, I'll check it out. But it's it's pretty expensive right now. It's like one thousand five hundred dollars Canadian, so it's quite expensive. Um, but yeah, maybe sometime when it comes down in price, I'll, I'll definitely check it out. So let me know, guys, what you think of these three VR headsets. Was this information useful to you guys? Uh, let me know. Um, I hope it was. So as always.